Palisades, Eaton, Hearst, and Auto. Many names that have become so familiar from us in the last week. And you see the matching footage to all of those wildfires on your screen. And as wildfires have become more frequent and intense, understanding the naming process can help us track and discuss these events more effectively. Wildfires are named by agencies that discover them, typically the local fire department or the relevant land management agency. And the naming process is crucial for clear communication and coordination among various teams involved in the firefighting. Let's start with the location-based naming. Most wildfires are named after geographical locations. This could be maybe the nearest town or a notable landmark or a natural feature such as a mountain, a river, or creek. For example, the campfire back in 2018 was named after Camp Creek Road. That was the location where the fire started. As for uniqueness and consistency, agencies aim to choose names that are unique and unlikely to be repeated within the same year. That helps avoid a lot of confusion. And this becomes really important when multiple fires are burning simultaneously in the same region. Kind of reminds me of, you know, naming hurricanes, right, when we can have multiples at the same time. And that's the reason they have separate names. It's best to keep things really simple and have a way to remember them. So those names are usually really short and easy to remember. And that helps for quick identification and communication, especially during broadcasts like this one and updates throughout the fire season. And the last historical and cultural considerations. In some cases, the names also reflect historical or cultural significance. However, the primary focus continues to be that the name is relevant to location and easy to communicate. The process of naming wildfires is essential for effective management and communication. We'll continue to update you on all the fires here at over on AccuWeather.com.